Hey, John. John, come here. You gotta, you gotta see this video. It's hysterical. Oh, hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? It's so funny. This oh, one. yeah, yeah, that one is funny. It's so great. It's so funny. Where, where My name is John, and I'm different than most people here. I'm a thinker. This is one of mine. It's what I do. I design cardboard cutouts. Gilbert, how you doing? How's that bagel? Boy? I challenge myself to create the most comfortable work environment possible while maintaining the image of a strong worker bee. Listen, I'm not out to screw anyone over here. I just want what any man wants, to be comfortable. And if I'm comfortable, I'm smiling. And if I'm smiling, other people are smiling. It's contagious. That's Campbell, my boss. Good morning, Campbell, and how are you today? Uh, we got a major catastrophe on our hands today. Major, where you been all morning? Do you check your email? What possibly could have happened? Carousel on our first mimosa. Why do I even give you an email address? Go back into that little cuddle den of yours, read your email, and then get back here! Well, you could just tell me- Ding! I'm done! Yeah, but I'm right Shh. here. Shh! Read it! Good morning, lovey. Hey, buddy. What's up with this email from Captain Campbell? Ah, oh, don't worry about it. I took care of it already. What'd it say? It says, in a quote, John, major catastrophe. Come see me about it. Better yet, send your mother. Bam. What is with that guy? I know, he, he panics over everything. Then he goes to you to solve all of his problems. You're his chicken soup for his managerial soul. You could be Campbell's chicken soup. I will never be chicken soup. I remain the crap soup of the day that nobody orders because the restaurant forgot to put it on the menu. I'm invisible in this company. Oh, come on! I wish I had your luck. The guy's got a new catastrophe every day. He's ruining my whole routine with this crap. Maybe you need a new routine. Don't you dare. Fresh sweet strawberry oranges? You two are so cute together. <laughs> You're drunk. I have a light buzz. Are you guys going to the meeting? What, what meeting? meeting? Janice, the new operations manager is having a meeting in five minutes. How can you not know about this? Five minutes? I have to go brush my teeth. Many of you know my face, but few of you know my name. It's Janice McWallen, Jr. And I'm here today to talk to you about PUPE. <laughs> Productivity and efficiency in the workplace. Is anyone listening to this? Campbell is looking. This is exactly what I mean by an unnecessary variable throwing my whole internal balance off kilter. I should be taking my morning dump right now. Is everything a routine with you? We both know I've had some serious logistical details to work out here. few moments of sanctuary on the pot make my entire day tolerable. Without that, it's just a colossal waste of time. Like four pies. Exactly. <laughs> By far, though, the best addition to my routine has been the handicapped bathroom. You use the handicapped bathroom? Shh! And now, the big news. At the end of each week, I shall be rewarding one of you hardworking individuals with a little something extra. The gold star. Look, it's not like it's a parking space. You know, you're not gonna get a ticket for it. Live a little, you boy scout. Hey, I made it to Eagle. <laughs> yeah, you refuse to spread your wings. Have you ever been in there? It's like a palace. You know, John's right. Why should 99% of the employees only use 50% of the bathroom? Yes. Thank you. No. And don't go telling everyone about this, by the way. You'll ruin it for me. The more people that know about it, the more they're going to use it. And I need this levy. And we shall succeed together because Janice McWallen Jr. does not fail. <laughs> you can dispense with the ass-kissing, Campbell. 
Are there any other questions? Oh, right here. Now let's get right back to work. <clears throat> It's ocupado. What's going on in there? Are you going to be a while? Well, I'm going to be about as long as it takes, all right? Well, it's just that this is my usual stall and... Yeah, well, this is my usual stall too, buddy. And if one of my friends out there has been telling you about this little thing I got going on, you can go out there and tell him I'm going to kick his ass next time I see him. You listen to me. You better get out of there right now. You better get out of here before it gets rough. No respect. You're the very epitome of what's wrong with this entire company. Oh, quit banging out there, will ya? People are trying to relax. No! No! You better get out of here! Your days will never be the same when I'm through with you! Uh. Do you hear me? I've got spies all over this company! And when I text you, your last days will be a living hell! So, how was the dump? What dump? Nothing. <laughs> uh, it was, it's fine. Nothing to report. You all right, John? Why would you think something happened? <laughs> but you're sweating profusely and your eye, left eye keeps switching. No, everything went out smoothly and great, of course. What the hell is that? Are they heading to the bathroom? Oh, God. What the hell kind of... Don't did you leave them in there? I mean, I've heard of giant dumps before, but this is ridiculous. Who's coming in next to swat with gas? Let me ask. Okay, okay, look, this is gonna sound really bad, but um I was in there and then Janice came in and he was going crazy and he was beating on the door, and then I think he slipped and fell in the next stall. And you just left him in there. Uh, but it was really, really complicated because he was uh he had a weapon. A weapon? Yeah, it was uh it was a walker, but it was a dangerous walker with projectile tennis balls and you just left him laying on the ground, you're handicapped. What's John, what is wrong with you? I didn't know he was handicapped. What was I supposed to do? He was like screaming at me with that voice. You heard him, right? And then he's, I think he's gonna kill me, man. I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Oh, God. Stop! Stop, God damn it, stop! Where's John? John, get over here! Now! John, I want you to know that I've recognized your reverence and respect with regards to Pupe. And it's now upon your shoulders that the entire future of this company now rests. John, reach into my back pocket. Do it now, son. Do it. Tell me when you've got it. Oh my God. Do you have it? Yeah. Good. John, with this gold star, comes great responsibility. I'm counting upon you in my absence to carry on in the highest traditions and standards with respect to pupe. Now take me away. Am I scared? No, I have no reason to be. Just had an off day, that's all. My routine is still at an adolescent stage and there's more work to be done here. So this is my vlog for Handicapped John, which is a short sitcom film which follows the story of a guy called John who uses a handicapped bathroom at his work in an office workplace. And he kind of uses this handicapped bathroom to escape from the reality of his job and the stresses of his boss, Campbell, who puts a lot of work on him and expects a lot from him. So he uses this handicapped bathroom to escape from that and to have his alone time and to be able to relax and unwind. Um, if he loses it, or if he loses the freedom, then he loses his private escape. 
and unfortunately for John, a new boss called Janus gets employed halfway through the film and he just so happens to be handicapped, which we isn't revealed until the end um, in scene 20, you know, in scene 19. Things kick off because Janus tries to get into the stall, which is already occupied by John, who is relaxing, doing his normal routine, and John refuses to allow this, to allow Janus to go into the bathroom, and unfortunately this results in an accident involving Janus, which leads me on to the low points of the film. So in during, nine, in, during scene 19, John is in his usual spot in the handicapped bathroom. Uh, this time he's relaxing with cucumbers on his eyes to illustrate that he's fully in the zone. When Janus interrupts this moment of peace, John lashes out and things get quite heated. During the scene, John is very uncompromising and acts quite selfishly as he is only thinking about himself and not that there's the possibility that someone actually might need to use the bathroom. It's during this point where the audience really see a true reflection of John's character and that he isn't actually quite the innocent hero that we thought he was. When Janus stumbles and falls into the smaller cubicle, we can sense the new level of panic that John feels. However, we don't really feel a lot of sympathy for him because we know that this situation could have been prevented had John been more considerate. The true low point of the scene is when John makes a dash for the exit, leaving Janus on the floor shrieking for help. This point is particularly low because instead of choosing to help Janus, John cowardly leaves him to cover his own back. In scene 21, John also attempts to play off what has just happened to Levy, which is another low point, but there's a bit more of a comedic value to it because hes you can see how stressed John is and you can see how unwilling Levy is to believe what he's saying because it's just so obvious, like the way he is and the way he's carrying himself, just you can tell that there's something bad has happened. So it's overall quite a funny scene, but it's still quite a low point as well for John's character because you can really see his true character and nature in scene 21, there's, sorry again, in scene 21, there, we see the, in scene 21, we also see a stretcher go past of, which presumably has Janus in it, and, sorry. So the technical process, I added some voiceovers wherever I thought they were relevant, so in the beginning, in the intro, the voiceover gives the scene context and introduces John and it sets up the rest of the film in a light-hearted manner. And then in the last scene I added a voiceover with similar intent but to kind of conclude the film and to prepare the audience for what else is there to come. With the soundtracks I added an upbeat comedic soundtrack during scene one to four which is the intro just as the main film's main soundtrack and then I also added some genre office sounds in the backgrounds of scene four to six and twenty to make the scene more believable and to create the illusion of people actually working. Then in scene 17, I added some classical music to contrast the bizarreness of what John is doing, which is quite weird. Like he's doing, he's playing chess, he's listening to music, like he's doing quite a few weird things in this handicapped toilet. So the classical, musical, classical music was for com comedic value and just to add that level of humor. And I also added some soft ukulele music at the end of the scene, 22 to fade into the credits and to just reinforce that light-hearted tone that the film actually set out to make really and then yeah I personally enjoyed editing scene 21 the most as it required a range of different shots and a lot of them were cut cutting back between Levy and John. I found this scene really interesting to edit because the there was quite a lot of choice to choose from and I enjoyed having that power to add which ones I thought added the most emotion to the shot and created the most amount of stress and panic because I wanted the audience to feel the same stress that John was feeling. For me, I also, I thought that editing scenes seven to nine was the most challenging because I had to include a diverse range of characters and their facial expressions in balance with the speech that James is also giving. Um, and I, did, I didn't find that particularly difficult, but it was challenging to include a range within the time space I had. Um, as well as finding the right moment to cut to the montage of John in the bathroom as well.